Hello, welcome to That Has United, the one stop for everything Manchester United. is the weekend and I'm here to talk about all the Manchester United transfer news from this week and what is the latest concerning incoming and outgoings at Manchester United. I'm very sure it feels like the Glazer 2.0 with Ineos with how slow and silent everything is at the club. But we have been having some rumors and some authentic news from good outlets, good journalists over the week. And I'm here to talk about everything. But yes, I'm going to be starting with Mason Greenwood. Because Mason Greenwood is going to leave Manchester United. Whether you like it or not, Greenwood is leaving. It's time to accept it. I've always been saying that he's leaving. You might want him to stay. You might be wondering why we are selling such a talented player. A player that will slot into the right wing at United. But he's going to go because we all know what happened. And we all know the controversies at uh, surrounding him. So Grim is going to go. And earlier this week, it was reported that Juventus are serious about signing Mason Greenwood. And it says, um, the forward is set to leave United on a permanent basis ahead of next season after spending the 2023-2024 campaign on loan at Spanish club Gatafe. He also said, according to several reports, Juventus are set to appoint Bologna head coach Thiago Mota as a new boss. And Greenwood is said to be the player who matches his play style. Greenwood has been linked to Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus, staying another year at Gatafe. He has also been linked today to uh, Benfica. Um, the sporting director really likes him and have flown to Madrid to speak to Mason Greenwood according to the reports. But let's see where Mason Greenwood will end up in. But like I said, Mason Greenwood is leaving Manchester United um, this summer. And um, down to the next news, Bruno Fernandes' future has been floating around. It was reported earlier that when Regnaghi's future will be decided, we also get some news on Bruno Fernandes and his future. And according to the report, it is being said that United will be willing to accept over £70 million for Bruno Fernandes if such an offer comes in. Remember when United released um, news con- um, through um, certain media outlets that all players except the young players like Ganacho, um, Minor and, and uh, Dalo, the rest are available to be, to be sold if the right offer comes in. So we are looking towards, um, that plan. If a good deal comes for players like Bruno Fernandez, Marcos Rashford, maybe the Indians group will be willing to sell if such an offer comes. But is anybody interested in Bruno Fernandez? Probably. Is anybody interested in, uh, Marcos Rashford? Maybe. Marcus Rashford has gone silent. He has left the social media after uh, the season ended. And we haven't had much update on Marcus Rashford. But let's see what happens with that. Remember, Bruno Fernandez's future could go either way if um, we get updates on uh, Eric Tag and his future. And um, also on Mikel Olise, um, we had some disappointing news earlier this week that um, Chelsea are really, really close to signing Mikel Olise. They are really, really close to hijacking the Olysseo deal for Manchester United. It was reported previously that um, United were the ones um, very close to signing him. But earlier this week, we have some reports concerning Chelsea that says uh, Chelsea will meet with Michael Olysseo's representative in the coming days with a view to proactively concluding a deal. They are taking an aggressive measure to ensure they beat United to his signing. Um, why United told why United hold Michael Olysseo in high regard? A right winger doesn't really rank too highly on the priority list. The current focus is on the defensive and midfield signings. Talks are underway with representatives of various potential targets. My United have always been linked with Olise. We know that we want this player, but because we are, we are still here to decide on everything and his future, um, we are still here to prioritize everything. Chelsea are coming in and swooping in to sign this player over us. And it was reported earlier that given a straight choice between United and Chelsea, he will choose United. But if United are not active in that deal, then I don't see any reason why he doesn't choose Chelsea to go to Chelsea instead. Because of course, no player is going to just wait for any club to do whatever they want to do. It's uh, um, Chelsea might offer him a better contract. He might view us as unserious and go to Chelsea. He's a, he might be a bo- boyhood supporter of United, but if you're not serious about sending him, I can see him going anywhere. So please, in your group, I don't know what they are doing, but we might lose out to Chelsea. Um, for Mikel Olise. And also, Benjamin Sesko, talking about someone that we might also lose to Arsenal, 
and Benjamin Sesko, it is said that United, Chelsea, and Arsenal have all put their products, their projects on the table for Benjamin Sesko. This was for Fabrizio Romano, and he also has a new contract offer from Leipzig, big salary, and the promise of being a star player. He now has to decide on his future. I don't see him deciding to, co- to come to United. He might be interested in him, but he's still the same thing. It is all scattered at United now. No manager and no manager yet. We don't know if Dan is still not going. So Benjamin Sesko might look at United, look at Chelsea, and look at Arsenal. I'll probably choose Arsenal first, Chelsea second, and us third. So Benjamin Sesko, who is, is someone we have been looking at for the past two years, is looking like we are not really ready for that. We have offered him a, con- a, a our project, and maybe he might choose to come. Probably he might not come. And also to the next news, um, Gerard Brightweight. Gerard Brightweight wasn't picked as part of the English, English um, squad for the Euro 2024. And I said earlier that this might be a perfect opportunity for us to sign this player because now he's not going to play any competition. We might, if we are serious about signing him, um, we can start negotiating with Everton who wants more than 70 million pounds for this player and that amount is something we are not going to pay so it is best to start right now to start negotiating with um everton for that player everton i have some financial issues and then they need to sell some players before the 30th of june which is uh, which is coming in three weeks time and it might be the right opportunity for us to negotiate a lower fee for him and sign this player and having coming straight on the first week of July to the preseason um training because he's not going to be playing in the in the European competition, meaning his feet is ready to go. And same thing with Olise. If you can sign Olise and Bright with the coming straight in with no stress, no fatigue, fully rested all June and coming in fresh for July. But let's see what happens with that also. And to another centre back links, it was reported earlier by Fabrizio Romano that Man United and Liverpool have both been monitoring Goncalo Inacio. His release clause is worth 60 million euro. United are discussing internally how many centre backs they want to bring in, which will be at least one right footed. Goncalo Inacio plays for Sporting, um, Lisbon in Portugal. 60 million euro. Are we, are we going to pay that? Um, are we going to sign two centre backs? We don't know. Um, we have players like, um, Varan leaving, Maguire or Vitorino potentially leaving. If one of them or even both of them leaves, then we might have to sign two centre backs. But if just one leaves, then probably we are not going to sign two, or we are just going to sign one. And probably that one is going to be just um dry the point with if I'm negotiate a deal for him. We are also interested in Jean Claude. We're also interested in um in Tudibo, in Jean Claude Tudibo. Um, he might be, it might be easier for us to negotiate that deal because, um, he's, he's from Nice and, you know, mind that have, um, Sajim Nakliv owns Nice. So it might be a lot more faster to do that deal. But also today it was reported that Ineos are looking to sell, that Sajim Nakliv is looking to sell Nice. So maybe that ties with Nice might be over. But before then, we might be able to do one or two deals, um, with them. And earlier this week also, down to another transfer news, it was reported by Fabrizio Romano that Man United are monitoring Bonamos Milos Kakes as a potential new left-back signing. Fabrizio Romano have said that 100% we're going to sign a new left-back, a young new left-back this summer, and he has given us one name that might be that signing. But he said that no talks have taken place yet regarding Kakes, but he's appreciated internally Bonamount will ask for important fees and they won't make it easy. Basically, if we're going to sign any player from any English club, just as we're going to pay, have to pay premium fee for any player, except the Inos group are so much better than the Glazers and are able to negotiate a better deal with this club. But like I said, do you trust the Inos group? Do you trust anything about them because they've kept us all silent after 13 days winning the FA Cup? We still don't know what's happening. We don't know their plans. Everything is just silent. But of course, we've had reports um, about them already looking towards um, signing players. They're already talking to agents and this and that. But deciding on the future of Eric Den Hag has taken them 13 days after winning the FA Cup. Sack him if you want. 
keep him if you want, but we need clarity so we can move forward on our targets. But due to some FFP and um, financial stability um, rules, my are probably not going to sign any player until the calendar year is closed with, on June 30th. We might agree deals, we might um, um, agree deals, agree fees, do everything, but the main transaction, signing of contract, would probably be after the 30th of June as we have to balance our books. So, Many clubs are going to do that also. Many clubs are going, to have to, uh, are going to have to sell a lot of players to balance their books before June 30th. And United are not exempted from that. We might, we might probably announce through the journalists, announce, oh, we have agreed a, we have agreed a fee for, um, Jared Brightweight, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, um, it's going to be official after the first, after the 30th of June. That's probably what's going to happen with some signings. But we might be able to sign someone like, Dried bright way before the month ends because everything really, really needs the cash. They need the cash. But maybe if we're going to sign Michael this year, we might agree a deal now and announce it next month. But that is all that is coming out from United this week. Greenwood is leaving. Brian Fernandez could leave if a good deal comes. Um, Michael this year might go to Chelsea. We might lose out on that. Benjamin Zesco might leave, might go to Arsenal. We might miss out on that. Goncalo Inacio, we are interested in, but the fee, we are not yet started talks and the negotiation hasn't taken place yet. Gerald Brightweight, um, is free, no competition, no European competition for him this summer. He has enough time, we have enough time to neg negotiate a deal. Everton wants 70 million, are we gonna pay that? That is left to be seen. And also, um, Milo, Milo's cook, Milo's Kakes from Brighton left back, who we are interested in. But no talks have taken place for him yet. And in terms of outgoings, we haven't had any strong links. Casemiro might go to Saudi Arabia. Omisaka is being linked to some plates of clubs. The only concrete outgoings for now is missing Greenwood and is 100% leaving the club. But let's hope that in the coming weeks, we're going to get new updates concerning incomings and outgoings. And I'll be here to give you all the latest news concerning Manchester United. This is Diehard United. I will see you all on the next one.